But if, you have, if we haven't met, my name's Deborah Ely and I'm the CEO at Bundan on Trust. And uh, I'd like to begin today by inviting Auntie Ruth to come up and welcome us all to country. Auntie Ruth is a local elder and is very well known to us here at the Trust. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a pleasure for me today and I've been up here on a number of occasions and I'd like to thank Deborah for that. And before doing so, I think... Um, every one of us here and people who come before owe a lot of that to the late and great Arthur Boyd for his wisdom in leaving a legacy of what you people are here today to get benefit of for our environment. So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the traditional custodians of the land on which we are now meeting. I'd like to pay my respects to my people, past and present, I'd like to acknowledge any of my people who are in this forum this morning, and I have seen some of my people here and my relations, and I'd like to particularly acknowledge and welcome the non-Aboriginal people who are here, because with you, it's like a bike ch a chain on a bike. But through reconciliation, we have to be those links. Without us being a team and joining together, we won't go forward. And I was looking at the, the agenda for today, and I've been here before, as I said, the sciences, science of what you do and looking after the environment. But as a child growing up at La Perouse, and my mum was about three days off her 96th birthday when she passed away, we didn't have these books like this to teach us about the bush or about the rocks or when the tide came in and the tide went out and the ebb and flow of nature. So at uh, Cape Banks, where Joseph Banks went, and I was looking at a book up there, some of the flowers in that book, we didn't call them by those botanical names, we called them by the names that we knew. And my mother made sure that we learnt that. We'd go to the bush and she'd make us a little billy can out of the powdered milk tins and get the five corners. My brother said there's only one or two of those little trees that grow up around Cape Banks today. And, um, you know, we'd go around to the rocks and get our food from the rocks and we look, you're looking after this river. Many years ago, I went to Canada to a World Indigenous Peoples Conference, and then they were talking about the sturgeon salmon. They were losing that because of the timber cutters didn't clear all the logs that went down the river. So when that logged up and jammed up, it prevented a lot of this breeding of the sturgeon salmon. About three weeks ago, I was in South America, in Peru, Cusco, and to see the Indigenous people there and what they're still surviving, absolutely amazing. And so, ladies and gentlemen, with your science, I'd like to encourage you, where possible, to talk to the First People. Because if they're lucky enough to sit down and have a mother, like my mum, to tell you things. I remember when we used to walk out to Pussycat. That's the entrance to Botany Bay. You've got Cape Solander on the south, Kernel, and you've got uh, La Perouse on the left. We might have been French if La Perouse would have beat Captain Cook into Botany Bay. But when we'd walk out there, Mum would say, come on, you kids, hurry up. Time and tide waits for no one. And then we'd get up to New South Wales golf links and there was this, like, a gum tree. And she'd break a leaf off and she'd say, crush it up and she'd say, smell this. It was a eucalyptus tree. So I'm very proud absolutely proud of my mum and my dad. My dad was stolen generation, so we made sure that we got the best education possibly in those days, and my mum made sure we went to bed on Gunjan stories. I didn't go to bed on Red Riding Hood or Goldilocks, and we knew, now at La Perouse too today, Deborah, can I talk? Yeah. The vegetation, <laughs> the vegetation there, it's changed. Like where the swamp flowers used to be, and the little wax flowers, all that's changed. There's, uh, there's, there's different vegetation trees. And the book up there I was looking at too, we used to call these flowers uh, peach blossom. It's a type of baronia looking at that book. But there's another plant that isn't in that book too. Uh, there's a white baronia. Mummy used to say, come on, there's white baronia as well. So I think I had one of the best teachers, teachers, my mum and my dad. So ladies and gentlemen, I would encourage you where possible uh, and I saw something come up on this screen here to do with the Nara Local Aboriginal Land Council. Please make sure that that consultation takes place because without true consultation, some things don't always work as good as they could. Deborah, thank you again. And maybe one day I might come and have a little workshop. But 
for what I do now, I'm thankful for you, Deborah. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge my people because I'm very proud of our race. We're one of the oldest races on the continent, ladies and gentlemen. And another thing, people around the world, first people, they acknowledge that and they know it. So thank you. I hope the rain eases off so my cousin can launch his canoe. And um, Deborah, thank you again. And Tracy, I'll miss you. I believe you're going to Sydney on Friday, I believe. And I've loved the, the communication we've had, regardless of the little hiccups. But <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, look, I wish you well. And I hope that through your work and your involvement and your love of what you're doing, can only help us go forward and look after this beautiful country we've got because I just think we're the luckiest people in the world and I hope everything goes well and God's willing, I hope I come back another time. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, I too would like to acknowledge uh, the traditional custodians, the Wadi Wadi of the Yuan Nation, who are um, the traditional uh, carers of the land on which we're gathered this morning. So, um, I'm going to just chair off the first part of today, and it's really uh, by way of giving a bit of context to the SiteWorks program and also talking a little bit about what we've done over the past 12 months since many of us met last year. Um, I thought it, it would be good, as I say, to talk about what we've been doing over the last year. It's been very, very busy. Um, look, many of you have been involved in this project for some time. In fact, you know, you are indeed the project itself. Your research and your collaborations and engagement with abundant on sites are at the core of SiteWorks. But just to go back a little bit for, for people who haven't been here before, in 2008, we were approached by Tim Cohen, a fluvial geomorphologist, uh, we non-scientists call him a sort of river man. I think that's kind of broadly speaking correct. Um, and he, to undertake some investigations into the flooding at Bundanon. As you know, Bundanon's on a great big floodplain. Uh, and it was part of his bigger research project uh, looking at the impact of climate change on rivers and river environments. And Tim, as many of you may know, has an artist brother called Michael who is very familiar with Bundanon. Uh, he's produced a number of, of different projects here. And so the two of them got together with a bunch of their colleagues and scientists and artists on both sides and uh, came together to sort of share their ideas about this landscape. And the result was this project called Ten Trenches. And we had an amazing afternoon and evening of, of information sharing at the very beginning of 2009. There were you know, discussions and some really spectacular performances. And Michael uh, sends his apologies for today. He's got a jet-lagged baby, so he, otherwise he would have been with us. But, you know, up until that point, I would say that Bundanon's primary narrative was a Boydian narrative. It was about the house, the studio, the artwork, the dynasty, and the gift. And, and indeed, you know, we are all very indebted to Arthur Boyd because without the generosity of the Boyd family, really none of us would be here today or it's unlikely we would be anyway in this particular configuration. But, you know, these extraordinary properties um, which are combined, they're actually nine properties pulled together uh, that make up the trust. They have relevance and meaning to, to an enormous range of individuals and communities. Um, Indigenous Australians, of course, are one such community and will be exploring and talking a little bit about Indigenous cultural history and, and practices in this conversation today. But, you know, Bundanon's flora and fauna and its geological history, the river which dominates this landscape, the colonial stories of settlement and agricultural production, and so many more are all present in this, in this space. And, of course, its history with uh, artists working here as well. So, Ten Trenches illuminated for us the opportunity that we had to find out more about where we are uh, by enabling, you know, scholars, um, archaeologists, historians, geographers, zoologists, botanists and, you know, many others uh, to come to Bundanon and undertake their research. And artists, of course, have had uh, been afforded that kind of access for many, many decades. And we thought that bringing the scholars from a range of disciplines and the artists together under this umbrella, the umbrella that we now call SiteWorks, would be very interesting and it has actually proved to be so. Um, many of the projects are actually, uh, the research that's taking place is quite independent, but some of it sort of crosses over and collides and certainly the coming together to talk about it seems to be a very, very uh, productive space. Uh, we have now 
over 25 individuals aligned to the project, and uh, we called them our SiteWorks Associates. Uh, and their number is growing, and it's a loose association. It is simply people who can identify each other as having an interest or a history with making work or an ongoing program here. We've also got a range of partners. Um, from the beginning, the University of Wollongong has understood this vision, and many of our associates are associated with that university in some way. And we're now about to enter into an MO, what's called an MOU, a three-year memorandum of understanding with the university in recognition of our important ongoing relationship with them. And, and a lot of that is to do with the way that SiteWorks has embedded itself in the region. Uh, the Southern Rivers Catchment Management Authority, Authority are also close allies uh, with Bundanon. They assist us with our really significant weed eradication program, which is like a life's work. Um, but last year they also fully participated in our discussions about the future of the river. And uh, following last year, as you may have heard, we... Uh, we initiated a thing called Love the River campaign that, as a direct outcome of that SiteWorks conversation and we'll hear a bit more about that from Pam Green in a moment. I'm going to invite her to come up and say something. Also, I should acknowledge that Arts New South Wales and the Australia Council, our arts funding partners, are very much behind SiteWorks. They're watching it with interest and they've given us some financial support towards it. So, um, you know, we're very grateful for that, that part. The Trust also commissioned two significant documents last year. These are documents to kind of to guide our stewardship of these sites. There's a land management plan and an indigenous heritage management plan. Indigenous cultural heritage, I should say. So um, those who were here yesterday met Andrew McGay from Total Earth Care and heard about some of his findings. And I'll be asking pa um, Andrew to uh, talk again in a minute. And he'll be followed by Dr. Sue Feary, one of the authors of the Indigenous Cultural Heritage Plan.